Great morning, great morning. Welcome once again to Searching the Scriptures, and we are giving God the glory, the honor, and the praise for another day which he has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. So we're on an intentional course. We have a guide. <laughs> uh, the pathway is getting brighter, and we are intentionally submitting our will to the will of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We started yesterday talking about uh, the cup. The cup, the cup, the cup. And we're going to go back to the scriptures and look at the cup and see about a look deeper into this cup when it comes to our um, walk with Christ. <clears throat> so as I was searching, it made me come to the uh, Psalms 116, talk about the cup of salvation. And then, of course, I already had some notes on the cup of trembling, which is the cup of God's wrath. So apparently there's a cup. Like David said, the Lord is my shepherd and my cup runneth over. So there's a cup that we will all drink, which makes me uh, think about God's plans. You know, um, the children of Israel, when they were in um, Jerusalem and the prophets was telling them that they were going to go under the Babylonians, a lot of leaders and even the rulers says it's not so. They was rejecting that, but the prophets kept coming to tell them what God said that he was going to bring them under uh, the Assyrians first and then the Babylonians, but they, they could not fathom that. They could not understand that. And I believe in this season and time that God is doing, is, is implementing his plan. And a lot of, of us, uh, if we don't know the scriptures or we don't search the scriptures, we will be fighting against the plan of God and the hand of God, which we can't really fight against the hand of God. So we have to submit and believe that whatever is ordained, it says, um, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you. Let me talk yesterday about Job. So one time we may not understand the course of God, but we have to trust that God is able to keep our souls, even whatever he has purpose and plan. And so, especially in these days, there's very few uh, uh, people are leaning to the Holy Spirit guidance who gives us instructions hour by hour. If, you know, if you're going before a court, he said, don't think about what you're going to say. The Holy Spirit will speak through you. And so it kind of left God out of it like Israel did. Israel went on her own um, uh, righteousness and they did not listen to the prophets, okay? And so we're seeing this happening now, okay? So we are going to be going into the scriptures. We're going to be covering um, uh, um, Jeremiah and Isaiah, and we'll be going to Psalm 16, and just recapping those things that we talked about yesterday. So we're going to pray, and then we're going to ask God to guide us. In the psalm, we're going to be singing, it's a highway to heaven. None can walk up there, none but the pure in heart. And, it's, and God is the one that's guiding y'all, okay? And no matter how much we declare and decree, we're going to have houses and land. That came to me, too, and says, uh, 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 <laughs> this new covenant has nothing to do with you setting up no houses and lands, okay? Because he didn't told leave everything. So we still holding on to the old covenant, you know, about he going to give me houses that I did not build and wells I did not dig. That's the old covenant. The new covenant is uh, leave everything and follow me. That's what the, the new covenant, okay, in Christ. Okay, and the example is Christ. So I think we got a little bit mixed up here when it talk about what we can declare and decree a thing and it shall be established and we're going to have business and we're going to have, that's, just, that's the old covenant. The new covenant is a new creation created. It says, shall you not know it? So let's pray and ask God to help us to walk in the light of his word and his will. Okay, for our lives. Otherwise, we're going to be like Israel. We're going to be fighting against God and, and, and uh, saying why these things are not happening. Okay, so something's going on. So let's pray. Father, we thank and praise you, first of all, for you are God and you are God alone. And there is no other Savior besides you. We thank and praise you for you are the way, the truth, and the life. You are the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. We thank you for the gospel of Jesus Christ, wherein we have uh, the power of salvation to be saved, the power, O oh God, of your word being planted in the very depths of our soul, transforming our minds, renewing us, God, hallelujah, that we might put on Christ and understand what is your will, what is your way, and what is your word. Help us, God, in the name of Jesus. We reminded yesterday that you know those that are yours, hallelujah, as Christ was speaking in the, in the upper room 
room. He says, uh, not to all, because there was one in the midst, Lord God, hallelujah, that was contrary to him. And we thank and praise you for an ear to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. Help us to have an ear to hear what you're saying, Lord God. Give us an ear. We see about course, We see in the in the scriptures, Lord God, in the, those who are in a state of rebellion, those who are rejecting you, they will have an ear, but they will not hear. They will have eyes, but they will not see. God, until you have brought forth your, your judgment, oh God. And hallelujah. We thank and praise you. Help us not to be resistant, rebellious, oh God, walking after our own understanding, Lord God. And Lord, help us, God, in the name of Jesus, to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Help us, oh God, to yield to you, our, hallelujah, our body, soul, and spirit, and everything that pertains to you. Help us not to fight against you, Lord God, and help us, God, not to be enemies of the cross of Christ. Lord, actually, oh God, open up our eyes, oh God, anoint them with our salve, Lord God. Anoint our hearts to receive your word. Help us to understand this season and time, Lord God. As the woman of God was talking yesterday about, uh, it's, it's not just life, Lord God. It is just life because we are living it, and it's a life that's predestined and predetermined. You are ordering our steps of all of humanity, Lord God. All of humanity, hallelujah, will go through very seasons and time, and the ultimate is your will be done, for you have determined the end from the beginning, God, and it's your counsel that shall stand. Help us to understand, Lord God, hallelujah, it's not about us, Lord God. It's about your will, your way, and your word, and we thank and praise you. Even as Christ was in the garden, praying, if there's another way, hallelujah, three times he sought, hallelujah, is there another way, hallelujah, but he yielded to you, Lord God, and said, hallelujah, not his will, but your will be done, and we pray the, the same thing, Lord God, not our wills, but your will be done, Lord God, according to your purpose and plan, as we commit the keeping of our souls unto you, and everything that pertains to us, we commit it into your hands. We ask you, oh God, to open up our understanding, touch our hearts, that this word will fall on good ground and take root in our lives. It's in Jesus' precious and mighty message thing we pray and count it done. Amen. 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 So, in light of what we talked about yesterday, and the song is, it's a highway to heaven, oh, none can walk up there, none but the pure in heart. It's a highway to heaven, walking up the king's highway. If you're not walking, start while I'm talking, walking up the king's highway. This is a there's a blessing you'll be um, possessing walking up the king's highway. I don't, I don't have to worry. I don't have to hurry. I'm walking up the king's highway. Christ walks beside me, angels to guide me. Walking up the king's highway. It's a highway to heaven, oh, none can walk up there, none but the pure in heart. It's a highway to heaven, we're walking up the king's highway. My way gets brighter, my load gets lighter, walking up the king's highway. And this song, and this song is read along because the scriptures say the pathway of the righteous grow brighter day by way, okay? So our pathway is getting brighter, and so we are going and headed toward heaven. And I know we're trying to, uh, in, in, see, in this uh, carnal nature, uh, uh, we have to be conscious that the Lord said, clearly said, uh, deny yourself, I got that scripture too, and take up your cross and follow me, okay? He called his disciples, and they said, we left everything. Okay, and I know some people say, oh, but he said you're going to get a hundredfold in this return. Okay, all these things in this life, he told the rich man, leave everything, okay, and follow me, okay. And he's not uh, uh, saying that we're going to set up a uh, kingdom on this world, okay. So we're going to look at first the cup of salvation, which we talked about yesterday, and that God knows his own and his disciples. We went through the, the, uh, the, uh, the upper room, the feast of pa uh, Passover, Okay, and we saw where Satan had entered Judas and that Christ was praying for uh, um, his disciples. But before uh, he began to wash the feet of his disciples and have the last supper, he took a sop out of the cup and gave it to Judas. 
and Judas uh, went off and betrayed him. And so we saw God beginning to set it up. And this cup that Christ took is the cup of salvation. Okay. And we, he told us as disciples, you would drink from my cup too, which is the cup of salvation. Psalms 116 verse 13 talks about the cup of salvation. Um, and it's going to be spoken in, um, um, rescued from death. Okay. This whole Psalms 116, it says, I love the Lord because he has heard my voice. And my supplication, because he has inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compass me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The sorrows of death compass me, and the pain of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. We talked the other day. You have to hear the gospel, and then you got to call upon the name, call upon the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. I call upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Uh, gracious is the Lord, and great right. Yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low and he helped me. We talk about God dealing with the outcasts and those who are in trouble and those who are in distress and those who, whose souls are not satisfied. The Lord preserved me. He preserved the simple. I was brought low and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully uh, with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. We talked the other day about God delivering us from the great death, from the great death, okay? He, we talked about him delivering us from the great death. My eyes from tears and my feet from falling. Yesterday, we was, um, uh, I was uh, crying publicly, you know, because of some of the things that I was, I was talking like I do with y'all. And then all of a sudden, my eyes were swelling up. And uh, I thought about it, and I said, you know... <laughs> How many of God's servants have publicly uh, uh, poured their hearts have poured out and people have saw the brokenness of their heart? They have saw their anguish. OK, OK. So but I was going to look up all those people, too, because I know I'm not the only one that this thing is getting to you. It's not always crying for your own salvation. But you cry. It says the weeping women taking hold of the horns of the altar. Call for the weeping women. Women, it said that's coming to you now. Call for the weeping women. Okay, call for them to take horn of the altar, the horns of the altar. Okay, because some people they can't weep for nothing. They can't weep for themselves. They can't weep for nobody else. But when you see and feel the heart of God, God Himself, He said He wept over Jerusalem when He was leaving. He wept. Jesus wept, y'all. Okay. He didn't only weep when he took, we're talking about Lazarus, but he wept over Jerusalem, okay? He wept over them. And he said, call for the weeping women, okay? The God going to put some, some things in our hearts, okay, that you have to weep for these people. We, it says, call for the weeping women, taking horn of the altars and praying, okay? So when you see the state and you do, you do know what's coming, you know what's coming on this world because we're taking the cup of salvation, Okay, that's what we learning here. It says, uh, the Lord preserveth the simple, and I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. Okay, and David said, I had almost slipped. When he saw the prosperity of the wicked, he almost slipped. But God, when he went into the sanctuary, and the sanctuary is not necessary, the building. It is going into the presence, into the presence of God. You mean drawing closer to God, hallelujah. And you will see that you will see and you will turn and see. You have to weep for the people, okay? I think even Moses wept for them, okay? Because you can't help but see where these people are headed, okay? Okay, and it says, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, therefore have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. Okay, this is a person who know God. Okay, they were afflicted. And you see, the affliction can come for many things. Because until you, how can you uh, be at ease when you see the souls is not saved yet? Okay, and you see what's going on. How can you be comfortable? Okay, I don't know. He said, woe unto those who are at ease in Zion. That scripture comes here. Woe unto those who, who are at ease. Okay, okay. Because they're looking and say, well, she crying. I thought she was so strong. <laughs> 
But I thank God for Kat, Pastor Ben. She she kind of spoke to me. She said, a lot of people look and see because you cry, and that means you're weak. Oh, that means Jesus was weak. He cried. <laughs> okay, he wasn't weak. Okay, they don't take um, uh, crying and, and meekness for 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 weakness. Okay, because even the Lord Himself wept. He wept when he he wept over them. He wept over Jerusalem. Okay, but it says here, but thou hast delivered my soul from death and my eyes from tears and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, therefore, have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. What shall I render unto the Lord? What shall I render for all his benefits? That's a song. That's the song. And also this is a, a, the 12th verse of Psalm 116. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And God has given us the cup of salvation. And that's why we are taking the cup of salvation. We are calling upon the name of the Lord. Thank you. We're not praying all the time for me, me, myself, and I. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. We're not doing this work for just me, myself, and I. We're praying for souls. Okay. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Precious is the sight of the precious in the in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So saints are dying too, okay? Saints are dying, okay? Okay, O oh Lord, truly, I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thine handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. I will offer unto thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. In the courts, we talk about the courts. And I think Pastor Ben, I was talking about was Psalms 92. In the courts of God. Hallelujah. We are planted in the courts of God. We are planted in the presence of his people. And we learned from Timothy the other day, there are all kinds of vessels in the house of God. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to go back and read Pastor Ben's uh, scripture because I remember talking about the palm trees. We're going to read that too because we, we're taking the cup of salvation, okay? In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of the old Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord, okay? So that was Psalm 116, and then we're going to read Psalms uh, 92, okay? And it says, it is good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon the string of ten, upon an instrument of ten strings, upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn sound. For the Lord has made me glad through thy works. I will triumph in the works of thy hand. O oh Lord, how do we triumph in the works of God's hands? Okay. What is God's works? Thank you, Jesus. If it's not to the church is called the house of prayer, making intercessions and, 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 and laboring and taking hold of the horns of the altar and praying for souls. Okay. Hallelujah. And see, I was talking to, uh, uh, in the meeting I was saying, which my heart was overwhelmed, because there are some, so if I was just thinking about me, I'm saved, y'all. <laughs> but you're not just thinking about yourself, because God wants everybody to be saved. And when you see what's going on, and then you're fasting and praying, and it talks about um, what type of fast. You know, that, that you open up the prison doors. Not just that you afflict yourself, but you're opening up prison doors and you're setting the captives free. Pastor uh, Natalie and Pastor Raymond started the world, the, 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 uh, the, started this uh, uh, 2024 with that scripture. That praying intercession, and then they, they begin to go through warfare. Okay, they started in warfare because when you start going into warfare for souls, you're going to go go through some affliction. Okay, you're going to go through some things. Okay, and we, it's, it's not it's not no easy thing, but God has appointed those things. In fact, He told me, uh, uh, "You take up your cross and follow Me." He just he said, "You can if you suffer with Christ, then you shall reign with Him." And how are you suffering? Paul talk about the sufferings. Okay, of this present time, it's not worthy to be compared. You're going to suffer. Those who would live godly shall suffer. Okay? 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 You're going to suffer, and you're going to be crying too. Okay? I'm just telling you, okay? If you're really laboring in the gospel, 
and laboring in the warfare, you're going to be crying too. And you're not going to be crying for yourself. People are going to say, like they said with Paul, he, he is meek. You know, in his letters, he's, he's, uh, he's like uh, weighty. But in his presence, he's meek. I told you that the other day. They thought Apostle Paul was meek uh, and they thought he was weak. Because he was not using the power of God. Because the more that God endow you with his spirit, the, 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 the more humble you are. You have to humble. And the more, listen, okay, I think Moses was weeping for the people. Okay? So, so because even Moses said, Lord, who can do this job? These people. You, you gave me to, and Moses said, Moses wants to listen, just go ahead and kill me because I can handle this job. Okay? Because when you are lay down with the burden of the people, you're going to cry too. When God put people on you, okay, you're going to be crying too, okay? And I think Moses, I'm going to look and see Moses, he, Moses wept. Moses was weeping, uh, was weeping for the people, okay? So it's not, um, it's not because you, you're not strong, okay? It says, Moses heard the people weeping and threw out their families and everyone at the door of the tent. And uh, it says, uh, uh, that's, I want to be, how did Moses mourn, okay? He was mourning too. 30 days, what well, he mourned, okay? So, so we're going to look and see. As I know, it says Moses, this is not the only one. People, Jesus wept, the disciples wept, they all wept, okay? Because of the things that, that they were carrying, okay? Be, the more that God lays you, his spirit upon you, the, the your heart is touched. You don't have a hard heart and a proud heart. You feel, you can feel what people have going through. You can feel. Okay? You can feel. And when Jesus saw them, did, didn't he weep? He, he was weeping with them. He, he knew he was going to hear a raise up Lazarus, but he still wept because he got a heart. Okay? So anyway, we're in Psalms 92. It says, um, uh, For thou, Lord, has made me glad uh, through thy works. I will triumph in the works of thy hand. O Lord, how great are thy works and thy thoughts are very deep. The brutish man knoweth not, neither does a fool understand this. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But the Lord, but thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. For lo, thy enemies, O Lord, for lo, thy enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But... My horn shall thou exalt like the horn of the unicorn. I will, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My eyes also shall see my desire upon my enemies and my ears shall hear. Okay. My desire of the wicked that rise up against me. Okay. The righteous. You talk about weeping. You see, right here I thought about David. When, um, when Absalom, how David was weeping so long. And the people said, David, David, David. He wept when God said he was going to take uh, the son of Bathsheba and uh, his son that he had from Bathsheba. He, God was going to take that child. And he, was, he was in sackcloth and he was weeping for God. And then when Absalom, his son, uh, he heard he wept. So he wept too. Okay. So people who are strong in the Lord and the power of God, they can weep too. Okay? You have a heart. And you, it's not hard, okay? The righteous shall flourish like the green palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of God, okay? They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fed and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. And there is no right, unrighteousness in him, okay? So we're going to see as we go on now. See, we talk about this is the, the, the cup of salvation, and the Lord told me, um, if we suffer, Second Timothy, if we suffer with him, if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. Okay, so we are going through these things. Weep for those who weep. Weep, it doesn't say weep with those who weep. Okay, so when people are weeping, you can weep too. Okay, weep with those who weep. There's another thing that's coming to me. Okay, you, 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 and see... <sighs> Okay, I've been saved a long time, and I've been 
laboring with people with all kinds of things, two or three o'clock in the morning, calling for prayer. I mean, not souls. I was talking the other day. We just can't always be uh, among each other. You got to go with some souls who are really in trouble. Okay, who is in, um, like I had one soul, he had come back from the war and he was dealing with those PTS and he was cussing and he was and calling me two or three o'clock in the morning. And just because, and then I would, I would listen to the soul and talk about how, how horrible it was and, and how terrible it was. And, and it soul was just going through, okay. And then I would say, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. And then I started praying some parts in tongues and some parts in English. And then the, the, the spirit in that person would subside some. Okay. And see, so God allows certain things to come and people to come in your life so you can pray for them. And you got to be uh, uh, touched by it. Okay. It's not no superficial prayer. Well, I praise the Lord. I bless you. Okay. And you can go in the hospital and see some people too. And you can see them in certain conditions. And, you, and you, your heart is touched. And you begin to see it. Okay, now, now the intercede is whatever God is. First of all, you're praying for their soul. You're praying for their soul, that their soul would know God, that they would, that, that whatever condition is happening in their body, because sometimes people in their body is suffering for, to bring their soul. Like Paul said, Apostle Paul said he had turned this man over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh, that his soul might be saved. Okay, so there's some people... Not everybody. Some people who are going through in their flesh is so their soul can be saved. That's what Apostle Paul said. That's in the scripture too. Okay. So therefore, you see some people, you know they're in pain, in their affliction. They know, you know they're suffering. And it's okay to weep with them. Okay. It's okay to cry with them. All right. So 2 Timothy 2 and 12. It said, um, uh, it is a faithful saying for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. And if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. And if we deny him, he will also deny us. And if we believe not, yet he abided faithful, he cannot deny himself. And Paul said, therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake. And that they may obtain the salvation. So Paul talking about, I'm enduring. How many times Paul said he was enduring affliction for the people? So God will lay on certain leaders some pain. <laughs> he told his disciples, you're going to suffer too. Or you're going to be, uh, he, he, listen, Peter was crucified upside down. The more closer you get to God, the more he's going to lay on you. Okay. Let the strong bear the infirmities of the weak. Some of the people that you're praying for and looking at you saying that you're weak, that you weak is some of the thing God done put on you for them. What the Paul said, therefore I do all things for the elect's sake, that they may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Okay, that is a faithful saying. So God is going to lay on. In fact, he told uh, apostles said, God left the, made the apostles. When you're in the realm of apostleship, you're going to be suffering. You're going to suffer. Okay? I'm telling you. You're going to be weeping too. Okay? There, now I'm not exalting myself, y'all. I'm just telling you what's happening. Uh, it says, wherein I suffer trouble as, listen. Okay? Husband men that labor must be first partakers of the fruits. Consider what I say and the Lord give the understanding in the thing. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure all things. Okay, this is the apostle talking to Timothy. Okay. So being a, a part of the suffering of Christ, you are going to be weeping sometime. Okay, you're going to be weeping. Now people say, well, just do it privately. <laughs> no, we're going to do it publicly. Because Jesus wept up in public. How do you think they recorded it? They said Jesus wept. He, he, he didn't wept, and, and it was privately because uh, he was weeping publicly. They put it in the scripture, didn't they? Somebody saw it. They said Jesus wept. <laughs> Jesus, if Jesus can weep, so can I. Okay. And what Paul said, uh, uh, I wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I do all things for the elect's sake. Okay. And they put 10 here, the elect's sake, dealing with the subject of election. Okay. He put down here to, to deal with that as uh, in um, 2 Timothy 2. He put also to deal with that in Ephesians. Okay. 
1 and 4. So this is the this is the cup of salvation. Drinking the cup of salvation. Okay? This is the cup and in the cup of salvation there is some suffering. Okay, even Apostle Paul, you know, when he was, was born, Jesus said he will suffer many things for me. How many times he was left for dead? How many times he was beaten? Okay, how many times? Okay, okay, how many times he poured? How many times he was mourning? Okay, how many times he went through? Okay, so there is a cup of salvation is what we have purpose to take part in. And Paul said he enduring these things for the elect's sake. The elect people. See, a lot of times, because the strong will bear the infirmities of the weak. Okay? A lot of people, with this pompous, you know, you can't even uh, uh, cry. Don't let them see you cry. Don't let them see you cry. That shows a sign of weakness. That's pride that we're speaking out, okay? Okay? Okay. Ephesians. And it says here, uh, uh, 2 Timothy. Okay? Uh, Ephesians. The fourth chapter, the first verse, the first ver chapter of Ephesians, verse four, and then we're going to go and talk about the truck, the, the 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 cup of trembling. Okay, uh, Ephesians first chapter, verse four. It says, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by the Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us acceptable in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through the blood and the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he has abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of the, well, you can go and read on time, that we should be the praise of his glory, who first trusted in, in whom he also trusted after that. So read all of this here, in the prayer that that uh, is prayed in Ephesians, that the God of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, the revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know the hope of your calling, which is the riches of his glory and his inheritance in the saint, which what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, Lord, to uh, uh, to us, Lord, who believe according to the work of his mighty power, which he wrought in us. And it talks about that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed. So we're going to suffer. Those who would live godly shall suffer. Okay. Now, maybe your suffering is not with I lost uh, a house. I lost, I lost this. I lost. This. It's not talking about losing stuff. It means personally because Job lost some stuff. And then Job personally himself was afflicted, okay? Okay. So we're talking about uh, uh, going through some things yourself, okay? Now, a lot of people say, well, I've lost some things. And I'll, listen, I've lost plenty of stuff, okay? I've lost plenty of stuff. But then the, 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 the attack can come personally or to your own body, okay? And then you got to fight through that. Okay, it's the only thing, well, I can get another house, got insurance. And if I don't, okay, I thank God I'm alive. I'm still moving, I'm still good, I'm just doing okay, okay. But when you start going and it comes home to your person, like Paul, the apostle Paul, he was beaten himself, okay. He didn't just lose his stuff, he, he's beaten, okay. He's beaten and left for dead, okay. When it comes personally, I was talking to a uh, soul the other day. I said, Apostle Paul sought God three times, remove this thorn from me. Three times, Okay. And it, and it is apparently the people could see the, the affliction of his thorn. They could see it. And he said, God said, my grace is sufficient. <clears throat> so to the cup of salvation doesn't mean that you're not going to have any issues. Okay. Just get that straight. So we are now going to talk about the cup of the wrath of God. We're going to Jeremiah first. Because we're talking about the cup of salvation is which we're taking part of. Which is a whole thing. But that's, what does it mean to take the cup of salvation. As Jesus told his disciples, you're going to take the cup, my cup. Okay. And Jesus said, you suffer with me. Okay. Suffer with me doesn't mean you lost your house and you lost your paycheck. Uh, <laughs> how many of y'all have been homeless? Okay. <clears throat> I've been, I went through that state in my salvation after being saved, homeless. Okay. And it's not because I didn't pay my rent. Somebody, uh, uh came in and, and finagled and, 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 and did something, okay? It wasn't because I was unfaithful. And listen, what happened when you, you, you are in that state? You, you lost your job. You lost everything. What happens then? And you are saved and you got the Holy Ghost, okay? 
You got some saints right now who are under extreme affliction in their own bodies. And these are Holy Ghost filled people. They endure the cross. They are bearing the cross. Okay. Partakers of the, the afflictions of Christ. Being partakers of the afflictions of Christ. There's a scripture too. Okay. This, I'm still dealing with the cup of salvation. Uh, being partakers. Okay. Of the affliction of Christ. What if God laid part of his affliction on you? And we will see, a lot of times people say, I, 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 I'm not taking all that. <laughs> no, I'm, you, I may lose a couple of houses for a few moments. My bank account goes down and then no. But what if God really lays some stripes on you? Okay. Now, let's, now we're going to talk about the cup of wrath. Um, uh, we're going to go to Jeremiah. Okay. So God began to talk to the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. That's the 25th chapter. Is the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Uh, concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, uh, uh, Josiah, king of Judah, that was first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, in the first year. Uh, then this was Jeremiah, the prophet, spake unto all the people of Judah and all the habits of them, saying, For the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son, son of Ammon, king of Judah, even unto this day, this, that is the third, and I'm reading this incorrectly. Okay, let me start over, y'all. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. It says, from the 13th year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even unto this day, that is the third and twentieth year that the word of the Lord came unto me. And I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but you have not hearkened. Jeremiah is speaking to them. The Lord has sent me to you, all his servants. The Lord has sent unto you all his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them. But you have not hearkened, nor inclined your ear to hear. They say... Turn ye again, now every one from his evil way and from the evil of your doings and dwell in the land that the Lord has given to you and to your fathers forever and ever. Turn. So God is calling for repentance and go not after other gods to serve them and to worship them and, pro and provoke him uh, not to anger with the works of your hand. And I will do you no hurt. So God sent the word. Didn't I tell you he sent the word first? He's one, he, and Jeremiah said, for all these years from the time of Jehoiakim up until this time, God is, has been sending his prophet telling y'all to turn. Okay. Now what prophet is saying for the, for the church to turn? Okay. Well, the prophets are now prophesying what people want to hear. <laughs> okay. Okay. And the prophets that are prophesying about holiness. And or hell is, is, you know, like I know one time that we was talking and it was talking about sin in the choir and, and people who know they sinning and you know they sinning. OK, and, and, and it's out that the people are publicly doing things like people say, how you know, Mother Allen, you wasn't in the room. <laughs> OK, well, you do have the Holy Ghost. OK. Okay, and so that's why God sent the prophets. The prophets are in the room too, but he, they, God, tell them, go tell them they sent it. And I don't want them in my, I don't want them in my service. But they did not clean the house. They did not make a distinction between the holy and the unholy. They just let everybody serve and anybody do anything they want to do. And they did. The, the people did not make a distinction. So now, for you see the hand of God. Okay, so uh, and it says, um, the Lord has sent unto you all His servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, but you have not hearken nor incline your ear to hear they said the prophet said turn ye again now everyone from his evil way and from his evil of your, of your doings and dwell in the land that the lord has given to you and to your fathers forever and ever go not after other gods to serve them and to worship them and provoke me not to anger with the works of your hand and i will not do you no hurt yet you have not hearkened unto me, saith the Lord, that you might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands and to your own hurt. So God sent the word first. Now you tell me in this current time, there is no prophets. And if they start prophesying, they are going to be rejected in the churches. Okay, because even in when I came up and uh, the church with the Holy Ghost was moving, 
the future people who was prophesying, they were shut down by the pastors. Thank you. And they were shut down by the people standing, uh, barring the door. And they refused to let them prophesy. They were binding their mouth. Thank you, Jesus. They were binding them. Okay. Yet you have not hearkened unto me, saith the Lord, that you might provoke me to anger with the works of your hand. And that's why a lot of people have been taken out of their position over the sheep of God. Because they bind God's prophets and they will not heed to warning of God. Therefore, thus says the Lord the whole of hosts, because you have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, and the, uh, says the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about and will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and a hissing and a perpetual desolation. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of myrrh and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride and the sound of millstones and the light of the candle. And the whole land shall be in darkness, be desolate and astonishment and, uh, uh, and the foundations and uh, uh, from the foundations and shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Okay, uh, uh, and it shall come to pass that when 70 years are accomplished, then I will punish the king of Babylon. I will punish the one who I'm sending you under. And the nation and that nation, uh, saith the Lord, for their iniquity and their land of the Chaldeans, and I will make it perpetual desolation. So I'm putting you under the people that I am going to punish. <laughs> now you say... See, see, didn't I tell you, God's ways are not like our ways. That's why we, see, we right now, we're trying to figure out how we're going to get back to houses and land and buy my new car and get, okay. But God get ready to punish his people and he going to punish the people who punishing his people, okay. I will bring upon this land all my words which I have pronounced against it, even all that is written in this book. When Jeremiah has prophesied against all the nations, for many nations uh, for many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also, and I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hand. Then he talks about the cup of wrath. So he said, I'm going to bring my people underneath these heathens. And they, and he told them through Jeremiah and the prophet, and you coming under, and the world is getting ready to come underneath the wrath of God, the punishment of God. Okay. Now, only one that's going to be spared is the Philadelphia church. Okay. And he will keep them from the hour of temptation and the wrath. That's the only church. But the other churches, okay, who got Jezebel in there and who's doing all kinds of stuff. And in Laodicea church, they're very rich. And, okay. They're going through. Okay. Okay. Now, this is what God said. The cup of wrath. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel unto me. To Jeremiah, take the wine cup of this fury at my hand and cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. And they shall drink and be moved and be made mad because of the sword that I will send upon, um, among them. Then I then took I the cup at the Lord's hand and made all nations to drink unto whom the Lord sent me. Now, how did Jeremiah make them drink? He spoke the word, okay? If God speak a word, it's coming to pass, okay? And then it said, um, To wit, Jer Jerusalem and the cities of Judah and the kings thereof and the princes thereof, to make them a desolation and an astonishment and a hissing and a curse as it is this day. So God sent the cup first to Israel, okay? Because he said, To wit, Jerusalem and the cities of Judah and the kings thereof and the princes thereof and to make them a desolation and an astonishment and a hiss, hissing and a curse as it is today. Pharaoh, king of Egypt and his servants and his princes and all his people and all the mingled people and all the kings of the land of Oz and all the kings of the land of Philistine, the Ashtar, the, uh, the Elkham, the remnant of Ashtar, Edom. So all, you know what, Jeremiah prophesied not only to Israel. Because he just told them. 
You're, you're going under the Babylonians. And then God going to start dealing with And so in the time that God began to punish Israel under the Babylonians, setting up the image that Daniel uh, 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 interpreted for the uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, from that time, God can send judgment upon all the nations. Okay, and all the mingled people and all the kings of the land of Oz and all the kings of the land is in all the kings of Tyrus and all the kings. Okay, and we could go on down and talk about it. it says, um, and all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms, all the kingdoms of the world, which are under the face of the earth, and the kings. Okay, therefore thou shalt say unto them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink ye, and be drunk, and spew, and fall, and rise no more because of the sword which I will send among you. Now, all this killing and all this tornadoes and stuff, y'all don't think the hand of God, you, you think, okay, we, if the church doesn't even understand the season and time we're in, this is terrible. And it shall be if they refuse to take the cup at thy hand to drink, then thou shalt say unto them, thus says the Lord of hosts, ye shall certainly drink. For lo, I began to bring evil on, okay, for lo. I began to bring evil on the city, which is called by my name. Should ye be utterly unpunished? I'm bringing evil upon Jerusalem. Hey, listen. See, the nations right now, well, we're going to go over there and we're going to uh, subdue Israel. And we, she's receiving a, a, a judgment. But we're going to go there and take control of it. Okay. Okay, now do you, you listen to Jeremiah nations, okay? For lo, I began to bring evil on the city, which is called by my name, and should you utterly be unpunished? For ye shall not be unpunished, for I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, saith the Lord of hosts, okay? And therefore prophesy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, the Lord shall roar from on high. That means the lion of the tribe of Judah. Okay, the lion has roared and who shall not fear? The lion has roared and who shall, and the Lord has spoken, who shall not prophesy? Okay, the Lord shall roar from on high and utter his voice from, the, from his holy habitation. God, didn't Jesus sit on high? Okay, he shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout as they that tread the grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord has a controversy with the nations, and he shall plead with all flesh. He shall give them that are wicked to the sword, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall come forth from the north to nation. From the north, from evil shall go forth from north, from nation to nation. Evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. See, when you're talking about a great whirlwind, I was in Hartsville, which the Lord told me when I was coming south. He began to talk to me about my ministry in the south before I left New York. He began to show me as I was walking and treading that uh, I was walking in, in, in territory that serpents was moving out the way. They was moving out the way. And then he showed me, too, just tornadoes all over. Tornadoes everywhere. Tornadoes all over the United States. And all kind, just all kind of tornadoes. And then one of the tornadoes, I had got caught up in it. Caught up in the, uh, the tornado. And the Lord said, speak to it. And I spoke to the tornado. And I was back down on, on, uh, uh, on calm ground. But tornadoes was whirling everywhere. Okay. So I thank God. It said, A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord has controversy with the nation, and he shall plead with all flesh. Okay? And he shall give them that are wicked to the sword, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation. A great whirlwind shall be raised up upon the coast of the earth. All the coast. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day, from one end of the earth, even until the other end of the earth, they shall not be lamented. That means cried for. Neither gathered nor buried, they shall be dung upon the ground. Howl, ye shepherds, and cry. Okay, wallow yourself in action. ashes, ye principal of the flock, you keepers of the flock of God. Howl, it says. Cry. 
Thank you, Jesus. Okay. You see me crying. They go, it said, howl ye shepherds and cry and, and wallow yourselves in ashes, ye principles of the flock, for the days of your slaughter and for the dispersion are accomplished and ye shall fall like a pleasant vessel. The shepherds shall have no way to flee nor the principle of the flock to escape. You say about because you see Mother Allen crying. You need to be crying too. You are the shepherds of the flock. And a voice of the cry of the shepherds and a howling of the principal of the flock shall be heard, for the Lord shall spoil their pasture. Didn't we say the cup of salvation? God, He said in Jeremiah, I'm starting with my own people. He's talking and He's starting with the church. He's already started with the church. Okay? A voice. Of the cry of the shepherds and the howling of the principal of the flock shall be heard. For the Lord has spoken, has spoiled his pastures. Okay, this is all of Jeremiah. Okay, he has spoiled his pastures. He has forsaken his covenant with, okay, he has forsaken. Oh, let's go back. Um. The Lord has spoiled his pasture and the peaceable habitations are cut down because of the fierce anger of the Lord. He has forsaken his covenant as the lion, for their land is desolate because of the fierceness of the oppressor and because of the fierceness of his anger. Okay, God is angry. And I'm telling you, God said, he told me earlier this year, they're not making a difference between the clean and the unclean. And those who are clean, they are weeping. They're weeping. Pastor Nellie told, she said, when the 9-11 when the uh, happened, my husband was there, the first one. And the second one, when it came down, she said she was in prayer and the Lord was weeping. And she wouldn't know, well, why are you weeping? Okay, so the Lord was weeping. Okay, she said, the Lord was weeping. Okay, and, and she said, because they did not know me. She said, they did not know me and they were crying out to me. And I could, and I did not, I could not take them because they were not saved. They were not saved. That's why the Lord, even my son Jonathan came back and Lord, and he was going through some things and I did not know. And he said when he was in this accident and he was going through the thing, he said he cried out to God and God said, I don't know you. So the Lord brought him back over here to receive salvation. Now, whether he's received as he did with Jeremy or don't receive, I am praying for him. Because he's back under here. I'm praying for him. For him to accept Christ. Because there's no salvation without the, the soul itself accepting God. You can fast and you're praying. Lord, loose him. You, it, that's the job of the church. To set these people free. Okay? Okay? Uh, the Lord, uh, he heard them weeping. Okay? And the Lord was weeping. The Lord wept. The Lord wept. Okay? And it says, the Lord himself wept. Okay? It said, what does it mean when you say God weeps? Okay? It says, Psalms 34. The God weeping. Psalms 34. Okay? I'm going to look at the actual we see. Uh, the Lord is close to the broken heart. And it says, um, uh, Jesus wept in John 11. Okay? So God weeps. And Pastor Natalie was saying, she, God was weeping. Why did Jesus weep for us? Okay. Because he could uh, see ahead of, in the garden. And it, it says it, he was weeping. Okay. Not just for himself, but he know what's coming. Okay. We can look for these scriptures too. Okay. Okay. So now we see here, God is talking here in the book of Jeremiah. And then we're going to go to, this is all talking about the cup of wrath. Then we're going to Isaiah, call it the cup of trembling. Okay. The cup of trembling. Okay. So now he doesn't say, you're going to talk to all the nations, not just Jerusalem. He said, if he come against his Jerusalem, shall all the, all the nations act like uh, we, he not coming to us? He coming to us too. Okay. Comfort word of Jerusalem. Okay. So now God goes to, through the prophet Isaiah. Okay. And um, Isaiah 51, hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, and ye that seek the Lord, uh, look into the rock from which you are hooed, and 
you out of the hole of the pit whence you are dead. Uh, look into Abraham your father and to Sarah that bear you. For I call him alone and blessed him and increased him. The Lord shall comfort Zion. He shall comfort all his waste places and shall make his wilderness uh, like unto Eden and his desert like unto the garden. Okay. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be afraid of their uh, revelings. Uh, for the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool. But my righteousness shall be forever, and my salvation from generation to generation. Awake, awake, put on uh, strength, O arm of the Lord, awake, as in the ancient days, as in the generations of old. Art thou not he that cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Art thou not it that has dried the seas? And it said, therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return and shall come singing into unto Zion, everlasting joy shall be upon their heads, and they shall uh, obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. I, even I am he that comforteth my people. Uh, who art thou that should be afraid of a man that shall die, and the sons of man that shall be made as grass? So this is how God is comforting people. And then he goes down, this whole chapter, talking about, in the midst of all of these warfare, God is bringing people into his kingdom which you know is not flesh and blood. He's taking their souls into you. It said, awake, awake, stand up, Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Thou has drunk the dredge of the cup of trembling and wrung it out. There is none to guide her among all the sons whom she has brought forth. Neither was there any that taketh her by the hand of all the sons that she has brought up. These two things are come unto thee. They, uh, who shall be sorrow for thee? Desolation and destruction and the famine and the sword. By whom shall I comfort thee? He's talking about his people. Okay. Okay. Thy sons shall faint. They shall lie at the head of all the streets and all the wild bull in a net. They are full of fury of the Lord and the rebuke of thy God. Therefore hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. Thus saith the Lord, the Lord thy God will plead thy cause of his people, because I have taken out of thine hands the cup of trembling, and even the dredge of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it. Okay, he said, but I would put into the hands of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, bow down, that we may go over. And thou hast laid thy body as to the ground, as the streets to them that went over you. Okay, so we're going to go to Isaiah 52. Because see, God going to take this, what you see going on in Israel, and he's going to put this same thing in the hands of the, of the other. Awake, awake, put on thy beautiful strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garment, O Jerusalem, the holy city. From henceforth there shall no more come unto thee the uncircumcised, the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust, dust and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O daughter of Zion. For thus says the Lord. Ye shall, you have sold yourself for naught. Ye shall be redeemed without money. For thus says the Lord God, my people went down aforehand unto Egypt to sojourn there, and the Assyrians oppressed them uh, without cause. Now therefore, what have I here, saith the Lord, that my people taken away for naught? They that rule over them take. So go on down, you see. Thy watchmen shall lift up thy voices, and the voice thereof shall they sing. So this is talking about the redemption. Through all this here. God is going to redeem through all this suffering. Because it ends up, it's talking about the suffering servant, uh, which is Christ. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be ex exalted and extolled and be very high. As many as as astonished as his visit, so marred was him, uh, that so marred, which was Christ, and his form than any man. Okay, so it took, it ended with the fact that Christ when Christ came, salvation took up, take him on the cup of salvation. And we are a part of the cup of salvation. We are in all of Israel that come to Christ. For God's mission is that people be saved. That's the job of the church. Okay. And so we see here about the cup of trembling. Okay. Isaiah uh, uh, 51 and 52. And then we're going to go and um, deal with Psalm 75. And then we're going to close out. Listen. 
There's the, the, we are taking part of the cup of salvation. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name because there's a cup. Okay, there is a cup. Okay, and it's not, listen, you can drink the cup of salvation or you can deal with the cup of, uh, of wrath and the cup of trembling. Okay, and uh, Psalm 75 and 80. Okay, and you see, I was talking about his pastor. He's he going to be dealing with the flock of God. 75 verse 8. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red, and it is full of mixture, and he poureth out of the same. But the dregs thereof are the are thereof are the wicked of the earth, and shall wring uh, them out and, and drink them. Okay, we just need to read this here. God's fury, God will judge fairly. So we need to read this too. All of uh, Psalms. Okay. Unto thee, O Lord, do I give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks for that thy name is near thy wondrous works declare. For that thy name is near thy wondrous, wondrous works declare. When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. The earth and all the habitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. I said unto the fools, deal not foolishness unto the wicked. Lift not up the horn. Lift not up your horn on high. Speak not with a stiff neck. For promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup. Okay. So we're reading all of Psalm 75. Listen, this is what, when we talk about we praying for things. Listen, you got to pray according to God. God is getting ready to revanish, revamp the earth. Okay? Okay? He's not setting up houses and land. And, you know, this is not what, that's not from the time of Jesus, the, 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 the uh, Lord coming. From that time on, he's not setting up no kingdoms over here, okay? No houses and stuff. That I want houses I did not build. And did. No, that's not what the mission is. From the day of salvation, when Jesus took on that cup, at that time, he said, sell all and follow me. And if you do not follow me, you're not worthy to be mine. Listen, listen, we're not in a dispensation where we're talking about we putting up houses and land and, and, and claiming them Old Testament things, okay? It's a, for the hand of, in, for in the hand of the Lord, there is a cup. The wine is red, it is full of mixture, and he pours out of the same. Okay? There's a cup in the hands of God, and he pours out of the same. But the dredge thereof are the wicked of the earth, shall wring them out and drink them. So there's a measure, remember my church, full of measure. He will measure out, because uh, the cup is in God's hand. The cup is in the hands of God. He said, but I will declare forever and I will sing praises to the Lord of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Okay. And you can go on God of glory and the judgment. Judah is known and see going. You can read on down. It's talking about God was going to comfort his people. Okay. But I'm stopping at, at uh, 75. Okay, all of 75, because there is a, a, hand, a cup. In the hands of the Lord, there is a cup. And the wine is red, and it is full of mixture. And he will pour it out of the same. He will give a measure, okay? The dredge is for the wicked of the earth, and is wrung out, okay? One through uh, verses 10. Okay, so we're going to close up, okay? Okay, so we see, we are taking part on the cup of salvation. From the time that Jesus said, listen, we are part of the church, right? Okay, so we're not who are sitting in houses and land. Our job is to run, to, to talk, pray and intercede for people and weep with them too, okay? So I'm going to find a lot of people telling me why people weeping, okay? There's a lot of things about weeping. What three times did Jesus weep? Three times. He wept over the people who rejected God's peace. He wept over the suffering of the people he loved. He wept when he considered being separated from his father. 
No, he was weeping. Okay, so it's, it's okay to weep. Let's close out. Father, we thank and praise you for help us to understand the season and time in which we're in, which the woman of God spoke about that yesterday. We thank and praise you, Lord God. This is a time of salvation. Today is a day of salvation. The time is drawing near, Lord God. Hallelujah. And we, all these souls, oh God, they said the harvest is right, the labors are few. We pray for labors to go forth and to understand it's the salvation of the soul. Oh God, that souls must be converted from, from um, the kingdom of doctors and and receive Christ to be converted and translated into the kingdom of your dear son, Christ Jesus. We pray, Lord God, that this word will go out so we'll understand, Lord, it's not about setting up because you're turning the world upside down, Lord God. You said the other day, but not one grain, not one person who commit themselves to you will be lost for you to raise them up in the in the last day. Lord, help them to know it's about the salvation of their soul. And even in my house, Lord, give, oh, awake the ear, oh God, to hear. Help our knuckle, Lord, to hear what the Spirit is saying that they will receive you in the depths of their soul. We pray for our whole household, any strongholds that the enemy have set up, Lord God. We pray that our families will be loose in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you for your anointing flowing throughout your vessels, Lord God, of the laying on your hands and salvation and deliverance, oh God, will come to our house. Thank you, Jesus. You said salvation is coming to my house, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, in the lives of your people, Lord God. For by Koshe, we declare and decree, Lord God, the souls under this roof, Lord God, we have an ear to hear and receive. There's nothing the enemy can do to prevent them, Lord God. And we stand in the gap for our families. We ask you to have your way, Lord God, as your word go out and accomplish what you're sending out to do. We ask you to send it into the hedges and the highways and send your vessels throughout, Lord God. Not my Koroshe, not about uh, titles and, 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 and Lord, help us, God. Help us to know what is your will. Help us to walk in your will and your way and your word as we commit the keeping of our souls into your hands. It's in Jesus' name we pray and count it done. Amen. 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 So, listen, these scriptures are sufficient. Okay? Psalms uh, 75 is how we closed, okay? Okay? Because there's a cup in the hands of the Lord, and it's wrung out, and it's red. Okay? And, God, and people are going to drink it. That's talking about the cup. We t there's a cup of salvation, and there's a cup of wrath and trembling. Okay? Okay, in Jeremiah, we describe it as a, a cup of wrath, and Isaiah, a cup of trembling. Okay, okay, so listen the cup of trembling and a cup of wrath. Okay, they're gonna tremble. Okay, so this is the Lord. So please encourage everyone on this YouTube channel. If you come here, listen. God in from heaven is said he's seated in heaven. God is, is going to decide the course of this world and the course of humanity. Okay, even if they got that gyroscope, they trying to God particle, everything, all energy. Even if they, they release a nuclear bomb, don't you know God control energy? God himself is a consumer. He's energy. Okay, he's not flesh and blood. All the powers in any realm is controlled by God. That's why he is God. Okay. Huh? Like the burning bush is burning, but it's not burning. Listen, we talk about God. Okay, so you don't have to fear. He said, don't fear about what man is good because God, like the Hebrew boys in the fire front, God kept them. Okay, we talk about God just deciding the course of man. He's the God of all flesh. He's the God of angels. God is God, okay? And we, he wants us to be saved, which means we talked yesterday, the escape is Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the Jesus Christ. He's the only one way. Like some people, they can't be but one way. There's only one way of escape, okay? There's only one exit door out of this world, and that is through Christ. There's only one way, okay? There is no other way. And so I pray that you accept Christ. God loves you. He already made the way. All you have to do is believe in the Lord. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't know about him, you can read, read, start reading the scriptures, okay, about Jesus, Okay, just who Jesus is, the cross, where he was crucified, how he hung out there, how they, they mocked him, and how they said, if you be this, come down, save yourself. No, he did not. He bore our sins. Isaiah 53. He carried our sorrows. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his strife, we're healed. And once you accept him, and he comes in, and you confess your faults to him. Confess your faults to the God, and ask God to come in your heart, and God will save you. If you desire to be saved, God will save you. And you call upon his son, Christ Jesus, who is the Savior, who is the Lamb of God, who is the one who paid the price, okay? And then if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved, okay? 
This is God said you'll be saved because God is a here. God is here too. Okay, and I tell you my testimony. I got like over a thousand uh, 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 YouTubes on here, and I started telling them do one of the. I started making the YouTube when the church was becoming uh, uh, under attack. The church was being invaded by a lot of things. Okay. And, and God began to deal with me through the word. And then the church began to, uh, you saw the, shut, the Lord allowed the church to be shut down. You know that, right? Okay. Because a lot of shepherds was fleecing the sheep. And God said, these are my fleet. I'm going to take them away from them. Okay. And then they're trying to, they're trying to start back with the same thing, but it ain't going to work. <laughs> it ain't going to work. It's not going to work because God already put his hand. He told you in, in, in the Psalms over here, I mean, Isaiah. Okay. He told you in that, that he's going to deal with the, the flock. He's going to deal with the flock. Listen, Isaiah 51, God dealing with the flock. And he talking about the shepherds too. You read it. I just read it. Y'all read it again. Okay. The, especially if you got, is God going to let this thing continue? Not if you go back to the same way as you was before. He's not. Okay, because God is, this time is winding up. So please continue to pray for each other. I'm praying for you. Please pray for me. Pray for my heart. I'm praying for all the salvation. And yes, we are fasting and we're praying and we're asking God for the salvation of so. But the, we are praying whatever strongholds the enemy have, that the people will be loose so that they can hear. Okay, we need to have, we need to have some serious deliverance services in the church. Okay, I mean, really, with the people who got the power, we're going to be sin delivered. You got anybody, whatever condition, bring them to the church for deliverance. Then you know power of God is working in, the, in that church. Okay. Listen, no, y'all going to see me cry some more. Because <laughs> I'm seeing the more things I'm seeing that's coming, which he said they're coming. All these people in, 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 in these places who are shut off and, and locked off. And they're, they're being told people not to help them. But I said, God, you can reach these people. Even if it's nothing but to save their soul. If it's nothing but to save their soul. I remember during the time of the Holocaust, there were some Christians that, that, that was in the midst of being snared in the Holocaust. And they were winning Christ preaching Christ in the midst of their captivity with the Jews. They were bringing salvation to the Jews, even though they were in there. Okay. Okay. There one particular, uh, uh, two sisters and they was taken in and they was, they were winning souls. They were turning their preaching Christ to those Jews. Okay. So God will be using some, uh, some people to, uh, in this key time and frame too. Okay. Okay, even in the midst of these floods and stuff, so that their soul would be saved. That their soul is just about salvation. Okay, so please pray for me as I pray for you, and we continue to walk in fellowship with the Holy Spirit and after the Holy Spirit and in light of God's word. Okay, all right. So please uh, push the like button, encourage some us to come along. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.